old people. I, if, oh, if you are fucking old, get up and get out of here right, right now. She was certainly foul mouthed, but she was funny too. Joan Rivers died aged 81, had a very good life. She had a, a wonderful legacy that she leaves to us. She was, I suppose, when in her prime, one of the funniest and most revolutionary comics in show business. And at a time when women were rare, even now, in that profession. She was outspoken, loud, hilarious, often political, uh, very much a libertarian. She also championed Israel. And because of that, the hatred now being spewed at her on social media, it is absolutely incredible. Straight Talk contributor Alex Gunn joins us from Ottawa. Did you find her funny? I, I found her funny, but I also found her to be more controversial than anything. I mean, Michael, she was this outspoken figure who had something to say about everything. She never held back. And I think there's something to marvel at in that. A lot of people can be timid. Joan Rivers was never, never timid. Mm. Now, that there are comics today, Sarah Silverman, for example, and a female mm -hmm. comic, they will discuss anything. But at, at, at the time when she was really in her prime, and a lot of people have seen her in the past few years, and, you know, she was getting on at that stage, but she would discuss anything. There's, there's one... Well, there are several clips we can't even play because <laughs> we'd have to bleep every other word, not because of the, the swearing, because, as with Lenny Bruce, for example, another revolutionary, she talks about how they're just words. If you call someone who's Jewish or black or, or gay or Irish a certain word, it's only a word. It's not such a, a big deal. We can't play that particular clip. We're going to play one, though, where she even talks about one of those apparent no-go areas, the Holocaust, as a Jewish woman. Let's have a look at that, please. If I think I want to talk about it, then it's right to talk about it. And I purposely go into areas that people are still very sensitive and smarting about. Why? If you laugh at it, you can deal with it. I re that's how I've lived my whole life. If, you, if I swear to you, and I'm Jewish, if I were in Auschwitz, I would have been doing jokes just to make it okay for us. That offended a lot of people. I don't find it offensive. But, no. uh, and, and again, she's a much older woman at this stage, and she always mocked the fact that she'd had so much plastic surgery. She, she actually said that, uh, I'm nervous that when I die, uh, I'll meet God and he won't recognize me because of all <laughs> the plastic surgery. But I, I think we're, we're better off if we can laugh at absolutely anything. Yeah, and I have to agree with you that, Michael. I mean, she's, she was always well known for being a staunch supporter of Israel. She spoke often about the, you know, the conflict between Israel and Hamas. And I think it's refreshing to see celebrities talk about day-to-day -day political stories, newsworthy stories, and really bring those stories to the limelight. Because most of the time, you know, they're talking about fluffier stories, things that don't affect people around the world on a day-to-day -day basis. Joan Rivers was well known for talking about issues that mattered, and I think it was really important that she was such a staunch supporter of Israel on numerous occasions. Yes, yeah, she was. I mean, just recently, and this was one of the last public statements she made, right. she was asked about Israel and, and Palestine. And mm -hmm. I, I have to admit, I wasn't even aware that she was particularly pro-Israel. Jewish woman, I'm sure, I assume she had a certain sympathy for, but mm -hmm. she also, by the way, just before we move on to the clip, she also said, and I didn't know this, that she held fundraisers for AIDS before Elizabeth Taylor. They weren't so well publicized, but she was on top of that issue before it actually became, I suppose, popular and fashionable in, uh, in North America. Here's a clip of her talking about Israel and Palestine. It, it, it is crass in a way, it's gross in a way, but um, hey, she, she's speaking her mind. Let's have a look, please. If New Jersey were firing rockets into New York, we would wipe them out. I am so bored. If we heard they were digging tunnels from New Jersey to New York, we would get rid of Jersey. So I don't want to hear anymore. Oh, we'll do a partial truce. The Palestinians, you cannot throw rockets and expect people not to defend themselves. Hmm. And she also, in that clip, makes fun of other celebrities who've spoken in favor of Palestine, quite rightly said they're just being fashionable. They, they couldn't even spell Palestine, but they know it's a fashionable cause to embrace. Mm. She always had this attitude about free speech. I think she was 
vocal about it. She had a lot to say and, and was happy to say it. I think she really got the, the conversation started when it needed to be started. And regardless of her, her political affiliation, regardless of her stance on Israel, I think a lot of people would look to her when something ridiculous would pop up in the media, when some silly story came up. She would often respond to a controversy that was going on. She would say things that are completely unacceptable to say in day-to-day in -day life. So it was always interesting to see almost what she would come up with next. She believed that she could almost say anything and, and get away with it because she could, because yeah. she really had this ability to phrase things phrase things in a way that the day-to-day -day sort of person would think but wouldn't want to come out and say. All right, but there, there were times, and I think it was rather gratuitous, where she said mm -hmm. things that were offensive and they weren't that funny. Well, even if they right. were funny, but why say them? We're going to show a clip now of what she said about the Obamas, and we can talk about that afterwards. Let's see it, please. And do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. It's okay. She doesn't. Why? Why? They, they, you know, it, it wasn't an issue she, uh, to, to, to attack the First Lady like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, she's, I suppose she has fairly broad shoulders. I don't know. She's a taller person. But I don't think that was necessary. No, and sometimes her comments weren't necessary, Michael, but it is all about the spotlight and staying on top of, you know, the, the latest ongoings. She was well known for saying things off the cuff, saying maybe, maybe she thought that. Maybe, you know, that's how she viewed them as a couple, their relationship, what have really? you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would never say something like that, but, you know, she was such a strong woman that she would say that off the cuff. And, you know, the, the reporter there was so shocked to hear something like that, that he he had to ask her again I mean she still came back at him with a similar response so you know you never second guess or you never question Joan Rivers twice she is gonna stand by what she said initially and whether or not it's appropriate whether or not she really needed to you know take that dig at Obama and Michelle at the same time in the same breath you know that's just who she was. And whether or not we're going to find someone else like that in the future, whether there is someone who is going to come forward and have such an outspoken place in society, in our, you know, the media organization, I mean, it, it's hard to say who will take that place because there are a lot of female comedians that are out there now, but no one who is as outspoken and it may be a bit ridiculous. Mm. Uh, in some instances, as we did see in Joan Rivers. Possibly. There, there's mm -hmm. something gloriously anachronistic about her, because we live in such a politically correct world, and she mm -hmm. was a product of, of an earlier age. She really was a product of the, of the 50s and 60s, and she just did not care about that. I, I think there are comments now that are, are, are more, in, well, more clever, more, more constructive, and maybe funnier, but uh, they're not the same, and she will be deeply and greatly missed. Thank you very much indeed. Nice to see you, Michael.